Matilda! What a pleasure to see you here in the library again, are we? Yes. I mean, my mum wanted me to stay at home with her. She hates it when I go out. She misses me so much. Dad, too. He loves having me around. Plus, I think it's best for grown to have their own space. <laughs> Your parents must be so proud to have a girl as clever as you. And tell me, do you tell them lots of stories like you do with me? Oh, how I love your stories, Matilda. And that's not a hint, by the way, but if you did happen to... Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Phelps. I'll see you next week. Goodbye, Miss Honey. And enjoy that tall story. As I was saying, Matilda... Who's you... that lady? That lady? Oh, that was Miss Honey. She's going to be your teacher. That lady? Yes, yes, your teacher. Now look, you're going to tell me that story or not? Once upon a time. Oh. <coughs> Once upon a time, the two greatest sex performers in the world, an escapologist who could escape from anyone that was ever invented, and an acrobat who was so skilled it seemed as if she could actually fly fell in love and got married. They performed some of the most incredible feats together anyone had ever seen. And people would come from miles around. Kings, queens, celebrities, and astronauts. And not just to see their skill, but also to see their love for one another, which was so deep that it was said that cats would purr as they passed them, and dogs would weep with joy. They moved together into a beautiful old house on the edge of town, and in the evenings they would walk and take the air. And each night, the children of the town would wait in anticipation, hoping for a glimpse of the shining white scarf that the acrobat always wore. But then they knew they only had to cry, tricks, tricks, and the great performers would instantly oblige, putting on the most spectacular show, just for them. But, although they loved each other, although they were famous, and everybody loved them, they were sad. We have everything. We have everything that the world has to offer, said the world. We have everything. But we do not have the one thing in the world we want most. But the one thing. We do not have a child. Patience, my love. Patience, my love. The husband replied, time is on our side. Time loves us. But time is the one thing no one is master of. And as time passed and they could quite hold, they still had no child. And neither would listen to the silence of a big empty house. And they would imagine how beautiful it must be if it were filled with the sounds of a child playing. Matilda, this is very sad. And do you want me to stop? Oh, don't you dare. This sadness overwhelmed them and drew them on to ever more dangerous as though where it became the only place they could escape the inescapable tragedy of their lives. And so it was decided that you could perform the most dangerous feat of a known to man. It is, it is called, called, said husband, announcing the event to the world press who have kept to listen with bated breath. The burning woman, woman hurling to the air with dynamite in her hand. hand. Like the objects, caught by the man locked in a cage, and it is the most dangerous feat ever known to man! Ladies and gentlemen, it is our destiny, said the wife, smiling sadly and slipping a hand into his. It is where the loneliness of life has led us. Mother's waiting for you. Uh, is she here? I'd love to meet her, actually. Goodbye, Mrs. Phelps. I will see you tomorrow. Oh, on your first day of school?
upon this feat, upon, upon this feat you shall! No! I have paid for the posters, publicity, the catering, the toilet facilities, if I give the crowd their money back, where is my profit? Contract is a contract is a contract! My hair is tied! The burning woman! And in the air, with a dynamite in her hair, and the sharks and spider objects, caused by the man locked in the cage, will be the wall! The wall of this day!
much work. The hands became sleepy, and she fell. Oh, no. She broke every bone in the room, except for the bones of the ears for little ones. She didn't know that she didn't look enough to have the choice. But that every was too much. Love her well, she said. Love her with everything that you want. For she's always ever wanting. Oh, my God. 